Boom. Well, I, I was going to say something, but it's okay. Boom. No, I was going to say... Boom. Welcome to my TED Talk. Boom. We're going to talk about drafts. Football? No. Like drafts. Military? Like how they attack each other with their heads. Like the oh, giraffe. I, I said giraffe. I thought you said drafts. No, giraffes. Boom. Boom what? Boom shakalaka, that's what. All right. So we got our bear fat. Have you ever seen... That. You showed me the video of how giraffes attack each other. Dude, it is... Whack. It's so funny. They just whack each other in the neck. They swing their heads back and then just swing it as hard as they can at the other giraffe's neck. It's, it's I mean, they can just clock each other with the tops of their heads. And the, the hits are solid. Like, yeah, you can hear them. It's like whack. <laughs> I guess they have no other way of attacking each other other than using their really abnormally large necks. I mean, what else would they use? I can't. I mean, they're too tall to be able to use their back legs to kick. Well, they have those little horns on the top of their head, so I guess they're trying to, like, swing the horns at each other, but then they could also just, like, lower their what? necks and, like, charge. What if giraffes were, like, snakes, and if they wanted to kill their prey, they would just wrap their neck around it and constrict it? Their bone structure wouldn't allow for that. Yeah, obviously, but if they didn't have bones, they would just be dragging their head everywhere. And then they could possibly do that. Maybe. But then snakes still have bones, though. Yeah, that is weird. They're just a bunch of, like, vertebrae, right? I've never seen the anatomy of a snake before, but... I'm pretty sure it looks a lot like our spine. Kind of. It's probably more flexible. Smaller bones. Way smaller bones. Yeah. But they do have bones. Unless it's, like, an anaconda. Those things are massive. They're huge. Those things are huge. They could eat you and not have a problem with it. They still have bones, though. Obviously. Yeah. You know what doesn't have bones? Bugs. You're right. Most bugs. Actually, yeah. Well, we got something to look up after the bear fact. Well, anything. Well, though, hold on, hold on. The one thing about snakes that does freak me out, like snakes in general, I'm okay, fine, whatever. I can see the snake. It's there. I know I'm, I don't want to mess with it. But whenever you see a snake unhinge its jaw... So it can swallow things. It's, that unsettling. F- it's unsettling. It really freaks me out. I don't care for that they at all. Op- they can open their mouths so wide. They eat alligators. Anacondas? Yes. Yeah. They eat alligators. They eat humans. They eat anything. Yeah. Then how are they supposed to digest your clothes? They just poop out your clothes? Imagine you're like an antelope. I don't know if they have antelopes where there's anacondas, but if there's something like that, it's just like chilling and then all of a sudden it just starts getting eaten out of nowhere well so it starts getting swallowed yeah that'd, that'd be kind of freaky and you can't i don't think you can outrun an anaconda sure you can i bet they move pretty quick i don't think they move that quick all right we got two more things to look at after the bear fact Kodiak bear is the largest terrestrial carnivore on Earth. You keep Earth. doing Kodiak bears. Whenever we get into broad, I've already gone through all the broad, just bear facts. We okay. have to get specific because we're running out of facts. <laughs> this is like the 35th episode. There's got to be more than 35 generic bear facts. But it's okay. Continue. Every, everywhere I look, it's like bears run 40 miles an hour. Bears eat 90 pounds of food a day. Bears, like all the websites say the same thing, but... The Kodiak bear is the largest terrestrial carnivore, and terrestrial carnivore just means, like, land animal. Yes. It's the largest land carnivore, and the polar bear would have it beat, but they just classify the polar bear as a marine animal. Well, it is. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. (laughs) Big bear. Kodiak big bear. That's all I got out of that. So, what are you looking at now? You're looking at to see if there's... Bones and some bugs, bug bones, or how fast an anaconda can move. I knew that bugs have exoskeletons. Yes. Um, and it just says that all bugs have exoskeletons. No bugs have bones. Okay. So. And it probably makes sense. Bugs don't have blood. Some might, but they have juice. Or they they have juices. Oh, yeah. You cannot run an anaconda. I was, yeah, I was about to say that. I've, I've never heard of an anaconda outrunning someone and killing someone. 
they'll just drop down on top of you. They're like, they'll be in a tree, and they'll just drop down. Those things are big and heavy. That thing would kill you just by falling on you. That thing would kill itself by falling. I'm sure it can dangle itself, though. Yeah, it'll dangle, and then it'll just, like, wrap around you. That's yeah. why I'm afraid to go to South America. Anacondas are efficient swimmers. They can reach a speed of 10 miles an hour in the water, 5 miles an hour on land. So if there was an anaconda coming at you... You could run it. You're good. Yeah. You're safe. But I don't think in a lot of cases an anaconda would just run towards you. Let's see. How aggressive are anacondas? So now we're getting into snake facts. I mean, we can do... There's a lot of different snakes. See, yeah. the problem with bear facts is there's only nine different species of bear. There's three species of bear and then six subspecies of bear. So... There's, there's an infinite amount of bear facts. I don't know about that one. There's an infinite amount. You can find something. In the wild, oh, green anacondas are not particularly aggressive. I've, I've seen like black anacondas, right? Uh, no. You've never seen a black anaconda? I don't think anacondas are black. I've definitely, I'm looking at them right now. Okay, fine. I guess there are some black anacondas. Can anacondas be black? Oh, they'll be dark spotted. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Dark brown or black spots. Holy shit. They can grow up to nine feet long. Yeah. They're big old snakes. And that's why I don't think snakes are cute. Some snakes are cute. No, they're not. Green anacondas are one of the largest snakes in the world. Female is considerably larger than males. They can... They can what? They can reach lengths of 30 feet. 30 feet. A female anaconda... Green female anaconda can reach up to 30 feet long. That is five me's. That is five u's. Five u's long. Five me's, me's long. Okay, you've seen the videos. You're like pictures of people who are holding up these giant snakes. It takes like six people to hold up the snake. Yeah. Yeah. They're huge. How big can an anaconda open its body or open its? On average, this isn't for just for anacondas, snakes can open their mouth four times wider than the girth of their body. So if it's 12 inches, then it can open its mouth 36. Um, wow, they can open their mouths 150 degrees and sometimes wider than that. That's crazy. That's insane. Like, we can only open our mouths, like, maybe 45. Maybe. 30. I say like 35 degrees, maybe. Without breaking your jaw in half. Would you rather do our next segment as snake facts or spider facts? How about neither? <laughs> gator facts. Alligator facts? No, just gator. Gator. What have you done, what have you done today? I went out to Marble Falls for five minutes. Why? To change out of motion. You were there for five minutes. Five minutes. But it was probably out of all the houses I've been to, it was the nicest one story, like relatively small house. I've it was one of those like gated communities way out west off seventy one. There's Pale Face Ranch and Palomino Ranch and all yeah. that stuff. I went out to um Horseshoe Bay and I think I've been there before. It was this one story house, probably let's see. it was a, the house shape was a U. It was kind of crazy. And like in the middle of the U was where it was an open courtyard with a pool. Okay. And the house like wrapped around the pool. So you just replaced one motion left. Yeah. The left side was the kitchen and game room. Dude, they had a, like the size of this room, maybe even smaller. It had shuffleboard, pool, poker table, TVs, a bar. The older people? They weren't home. Oh, okay. But I'm assuming, yeah, it was older people. But I mean, that's a pretty cool room. Yeah, it was such a sick house. That's my favorite part about that job. About yeah. this job is... Actually, I wouldn't say it's going to the sick houses. It's not going to the same place every day. Yeah, I feel that. The only time you go to the same place is if you're finishing something. So did you figure out programming on your own? No. Who'd you call? Ghostbusters. Dad. So what, you went to 405 pound? 
nine. Four oh nine. So you were you just guessing the zone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was zone nine. Four oh nine, four hundred, nine, star. Okay. Beep. Good for you. I guess you're learning. Kind of. You still had to call someone. Yeah. Why you always got your feet on my side of the I table? I don't have my feet on your side of the table. Here, I'll just stretch them out this way. My legs get tired, and I want to stretch them out. One thing, my skateboarding progress is actually, it's slowed down. Have you ever read the book, uh, 1984, by George Orwell? No. You never had to read that? No. Not in high school? Mm-mm. So you, you know what the book is about, though? I've heard of 1984, but I've never read it. Never heard of anything about it. Really? Is it a book that I should read? Um, increasingly so. I would say every day that goes by, your need to read it goes up substantially. It's only 256 pages. It's not a long book. 328, I mean. It's not a long book, and... Political, dystopian, political fiction, social science fiction. Yes. Sounds interesting. It's a dystopian society where Big Brother, that's what they call basically the government, the operating officials, have control over everything in everyone's lives. Nice. And they tell you what you can and cannot do at all times. I would not want to live there. Well. So, wait. Damn it, I already X'd it out. When was the book written? It was long time ago. Published in June 8th, 49. Yeah, long time ago. So was this someone just trying to predict the future? Mm-hmm. And George Orwell isn't his real name. It's a, a pen name. And it was a pretty good guess. It's a pretty good guess back in 1949 or whenever he had the idea to start writing it. But It was his last book. Mm-hmm. I think he's English. Secker and Warburg. What? Secker and Warburg as Orwell. Oh, yeah. That's his name. But you should read that. Um, the, uh, the ideas and themes of that book are applicable to everyday life. Really? Yes. I mean, just the idea, the premise behind the story that's being told is happening more and more every day. We're getting closer and closer to that point every single day. That is true. We're and it sucks. Yeah. It's so it's so bad. If one country was to dominate the entire world, which country do you think would own the world? China. That's what, that's the way it's looking right now. I would go ahead and say that China is the world superpower right now. I would say that. They got a lot of people. No, uh, it's not about people. It's just politics and all. Um, what made our country so free and the liberties that we've we've always had are starting to dwindle as a whole and whether it's for the the good or the bad better or worse um it is what it is and that's kind of the idea behind we can vote on the policies that we want and we have politicians that represent us and you know that sometimes that whole system can go haywire sometimes. And then when you have a government that's basically controlled by one person and a, a board of people that basically communism. run the whole, communism that run the whole country that make the decisions for everyone, they can just do whatever they want and they can do as they see fit. And there's, not the wasted time, wasted motion, wasted energy of the political climate that we have here in the States. It's hard to get things done, as you've probably heard and have seen with American politics. It's hard to accomplish things. Yeah, because one president sets in all of these good ideas and these things that are going to happen. And then by the time they end their term, a new president comes in with their own ideas. And then whatever was almost done kind of just gets tossed away. Well, here's the thing, though, is that people put so much esteem and give so much credit to presidencies. Oh, my gosh. The president doesn't really do anything. Well, he, 
starting with Obama, the president could start doing a lot more because Obama exercised this new power that he had in the executive order. And he passed a lot of them. And so did Trump and so did, and so is Biden now. So it's basically a, he doesn't have to go through Congress. He doesn't have to go through the house. Oh, he could pass his own laws. He could just pass whatever he wants to pass. So he can override. So whenever Joe Biden came in his first day of presidency, he overrode. He, he, I think he wrote about 75 executive orders or so. There was one that basically he undid all the executive orders that, Trump put in, and then he put in his own, and he can just write as many as he wants, basically. Yeah. So the president has more power today than he did 20 years ago, but then still the lawmakers, the people who decide uh, how much you pay in taxes, what kind of programs are going to be enacted, put in place, all that guy, all that stuff uh, comes through Congress. So the power still relies in Congress. I was going to say, that really kind of tips the scale, the lever scale for... Because you've been, uh, if you went to school in America, you've been taught that the American government is, I can't think of the word. It's, they all keep each other in check. I can't remember. Checks and balances. Yeah, checks and balances that. Right. And. I feel like if the, if the president can just be like, fuck you and then do that, that kind of sways the. It does. And I need to look more into it, but. Yeah, I mean, I can understand the, the, the need for an executive order because sometimes things need to happen quickly. Doesn't don't, We don't have time for things to try and pass through Congress or, or wherever. Um, but a lot of power. A lot of power in that, in that, that body. That, that wasn't there previously. And whether it's constitutional or not, um, I think that's still open to debate. I feel like the president has always had the executive order, but just not to this magnitude. Yeah. For a long time, the president was kind of just the face of the country. Well, apparently, Joe Biden just passed a new executive order that will require vaccines for all federal employees. I I did hear about that like a week ago. Yeah. So, he can just pass them like that. He can just say, this is the new executive order I'm passing, and this is a new law that requires all federal employees Did you hear about the new strain of COVID? I'm sure there's a new one. It's called Mew. Mew too? Mew. 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 It's apparently no vaccine can stop it. It's been, the way it's been mutating, it's mutated more than any other strain of COVID. It's coming out of, they say like Colombia, Bolivia right now. Yep. Yep. Why did you get just quiet? Because COVID's not real. Man. I never said COVID wasn't real. <laughs> it's going to be a part of our lives forever. Yeah. It's it inevitable. It will always be there. It will never, ever go away. When something like this gets out, it's never going to go away. So there's always going to be a new variant. There's always going to be a new strain. Yeah. And then you have the media saying, oh, no, everyone should be so scared. Don't don't go outside. Don't go to the grocery store. Always wear your mask. Go get vaccinated. There's a new strain. Please be safe and please protect everyone, which I can get behind. That's fine. Also, at the same time, we have the right, we reserve the right to get vaccinated or not. And if you want to get vaccinated, then get vaccinated. And if you don't want to, then don't. Both options are okay. And yeah, we're kind of losing that power. Right. Um, you know, I was just, I was like, Think about it like 30 seconds ago. If COVID is in fact created human and in a lab, in a lab, and someone leaked it, God, just fuck that person. Like they put the the entire world behind 50 years. Not every part of the world, but I would say most, yeah, most parts of the world. Yeah, no, um, it's not confirmed to be the truth, but it is still the leading theory behind how it all happened. If I had a time machine, I would go figure it out. I would, I would go wait at that lab. In Wuhan? In Wuhan. I would wait there for three months. Because, I mean, it takes two weeks for COVID signs to, like, show up and show that you have it. Even though it, it COVID started, like, November of 19. 
Yeah, that's that's when the first reported case. So happened. it was probably leaked like a month before that, maybe a few weeks. Perhaps I would go back to that time. You know that lab in Wuhan was cited for safety violations in 2019 and 2018. That happened. Yeah, they also were saying that COVID could have come from the wet markets. Yeah, there's no way. But have you you know what the wet markets are, right? Yes. For the people that don't know what the wet markets are, it's just it's a place. I'm sure they're all over the world, but in China, they say it's a wet market, but it's not really like the way that it's described. Um, here, I, I've heard something about it before. They basically just have cages of animals stacked on top of each other, and they don't give them trays to poop on or anything. So the the animals just poop through the the cages. So if you're the bottom animal, that's tough. That is so tough. Yeah. I was thinking about it on my drive um, out to Marble Falls earlier. I'm, the, the idea of having my own bear is really growing on me. Really? Yes. You want to have your own bear? I don't want to put a mama bear through the heartache of losing a cub. But I want to be mama bear to a cub. And then just wait like a year for it to be bigger than me. And then now you have this, this bear. I'm going to get my own bed for it. Or I'm just going to get a king size bed and it sleeps with me. That That's what it is. I'm going to get a king size bed. It's going to break the bed. I will invent a new bed. You're going to invent a bear bed? A bear bed. A bed where you can sleep with your pet bear. The shack bed. Nope, it's got to be a bear bed. Bear shack. Nope. Just bear bed. To put steel rods inside the bed. I'm trying to think of how to start this sentence because I almost started it so wrong. I was about to say, you're sitting there thinking for a second. I don't know how to start it, so I'm just going to spit the words out and then pick the words out that I want to say. I would never want to kill someone. That's how I'm going to start this. But if someone gave me a burger and I'm eating this burger, I'm like, damn, this is really good. Like, what kind of burger this is? And they're like, it's a bear burger. I got someone to kill. I, if someone made me eat a bear burger, they are getting choked out on the spot. Bear burger? Is that even heard of? Yeah, you can, there's bear meat. You can get bear meat. I'm just saying, if someone fed me a bear burger without telling me it was bear, they just told me, like, yeah, that's that's cow. And well, then they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, that's grizzly. I'm like, that was what? You wouldn't ever eat a bear, even if? No. Ever? No. For no reason at all? I love them too much. What about bison? Yeah, I'll eat a bison. What about an elk? Of course. Elk meat's great. Just not bears? No. They're sacred. They're endangered. Yeah, okay. And if you didn't have a gun, it would kill you. Right. Would you rather see the dinosaurs or see woolly mammoths? Dinosaurs. I like if you asked me this before. I asked dinosaurs or aliens. Oh, yeah. I said dinosaurs. I still say dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are too cool. And we don't really know exactly what they look like. Like the picture. They could have had hair. Because hair doesn't stay in fossils. So they could have had hair. We don't know what they sound like. Someone made those sounds up. Right. They could they could sound like anything. Ah. They could sound like that. They really could. They could we sound like no that. We have no evidence to prove the sound that I just made wrong. There is no evidence anywhere. Right. So that's what I'm saying. That's why I want to see the dinosaurs. So I can just say, all right, I have all the dinosaur facts. Come to me. I'll give you give me like 10 bucks. You got dino facts. I've got dino facts. Pay me and I will tell you exactly what I saw. I want to see mock-ups of what the woolly mammoth looked like because weren't those things like massive? Mammoths? Yeah. Yeah, they're huge. The word itself, mammoth, is meant for big, but... Right. How big were they? Size. Holy crap, they were just really big elephants. Yeah, that's what they are. You think cyberbullying is a good thing? What? 
I said, do you think cyberbullying is a good thing? Is that a rhetorical question? No, I'm asking you. No. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? A woolly mammoth was roughly the same size as a modern African elephant. They reach up to 11 feet tall, 6.6 metric tons. What else? Do you think racism is progressive? Well, in today's climate, it looks like it's that way. That racism racism is progressive? Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I know what you're talking about. If you look at news stories on from most major media outlets, there's always race involved. It's always, always race this, race that. You can't identify someone without saying their race. It's like, nope. Like, that's a person of color. That's a person of whatever. That's a white person. That is a, mer- that is a person of this descent. Right. You can't just say, oh, that's a person. What's wrong with just calling people people? Why does it you have to identify color at all times? But see, then the problem is, like, if you say, yep, there was this guy that shot six people. He had a beard. Okay, well, was he white, black, Indian, Mexican, Asian? And why would you want to know that information? Because, I mean, if you say... So you can a, identify them? Yeah, because if, be- if you just say he had a beard, plenty of people have beards. Yeah, that makes me think that the race thing will never go away. It, it, it won't. Unless, unless we get to a point in our society where everyone has the same skin tone. Which is, is possible. It, that, it would take a few hundred, hundred thousand. Yeah. It would take some time. It would take some like hundreds of years. Hundreds of thousands of years. Not hundreds of thousands. It I would, would say. Take, I would say it would take thousands of years for everyone to be the same color. It's possible. It is, but that would take so long. But it we, could. We it, would be dead by then. Like as a race. Yeah. The only way we all become the same color, dude. What? <laughs> what if? They start sending people off to populate Mars, and they're like, all right, we need six black people, six white people, six Asian people, six Indian people, and they just send this mulatto rocket over there. Sounds like that's something that would happen. Yeah. I mean, you got to keep all the genes. Yeah, I guess. I guess. I think think the way racism is now, where there's literal, like, I guess hate crimes and stuff towards people that will soon begin to filter out in a way, because if you think about it, all of all of the racism that was here 50 years ago is, is for the most part still here. All of those people that back in the fifties and sixties of America, they're in their seventies, eighties, nineties right now. So once that generation fades out and they all die, They've been putting, with some certain cases, they've been ingraining that thought process into their kids. So racism is just slowly trickling through families. And so over enough time, the way racism is today, it won't be the same by the end of our lives. Because, like, our parents' generation, the people that are... 40, 50, 60 right now are the kids of, they didn't, the people that are 40, 50, and 60 right now didn't live through the actual racism. They never like saw it like black and white in front of them. So as well, that begins to fade. And what kind of, what kind of racism are you talking about? Like America in the fifties, fifties and sixties. Yeah. When okay. segregation was still a thing, all okay. the people that saw segregation are 50 plus right now so once all of them begin to fade out well, i mean people who saw segregation so like you're talking about people who are like five years and older that back in the 50s i guess in a way but like the people that rode the buses when buses were segregated segregated once those people start to die out and then their kids because i'm not saying like everyone that was racist ingrains that into their kids if you were 10 years old in 1960 you know how old you'd be now? 60? No. 70? Yes. You'd be 70 years old. So 
a lot of the people who were alive during that era are are passing away. But then there's still a racism that persisted and has persisted for a long time. Because I don't mean to be uber political, but there is a quote from our current president in the 70s when he was advocating for segregation. Hmm. Yeah. I didn't know that. He, I think the quote was, he doesn't want his children to go to a racial jungle. I think that's what he said. That was in the 70s. Yeah. See, the thing is, nowadays, if you said racial jungle, oh, you're going to catch some heat. But back in the 70s, it was a little looser. It's, uh, it's different. It's definitely different. People look at things a little differently. I don't know. Like if Drake just twisted. Wait, I mean, he's mixed, so it doesn't really work. Like if Seth Rogen twisted. I'm so tired of this racial jungle. Dude, he's canceled. I mean, I don't know why he'd want to say that, <laughs> but he I guess he could if he felt the gonna, need to. I was actually, on the way back from Marble Falls, I was listening to a compilation of his laugh. I kinda, Again? I kind of want to be able to imitate it. I'm going to practice. You're going to practice doing his laugh? Eventually, I'm going to laugh on this podcast like Seth Rogen. Okay. I think people that can imitate voices and stuff like Bill Hader. He's good at it. Jim he Carrey is, is really good at it. Jim Carrey is amazing at it. It's It's such a skill. I want to be able to have that skill. Yeah. But. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, man. Orwell's a good book. You should read 1984. The Orwell book, I should say. Orwell's a person. Well, a, just a kind of. Uh, just. Yeah. Do you know the names of the Wright brothers? Edgar. I don't know. I know one of them. What? What is it? I know one of them was named Orber or Orville. Orville. Orville Wright, and I can't. I think it was David. Was the other one? Actually, no, it wasn't David. I know Orville was one of them. Was it Wilbur? Yeah, Will, Wilbur, and Orville. I don't know why I thought Edgar. But you were right. Congratulations. I, I, I don't know how I just dug Wilbur out of my head. You dug deep. It's but, just one of those things that I, it's, what's funny is there's a small number of animals on this earth that are conscious besides humans. But what's funny about consciousness is scientists c still can't explain what it is. We have no idea what we are and like how we're conscious and have thoughts and stuff like that. Yeah. It's still one of the biggest mysteries. Yeah. Would you ever want to live forever if you had that option? I don't know. I've thought about it. Living forever. That would be really cool. But you would also see everyone you ever loved die. Or you would know about them dying. You just kill yourself. But you live forever. You live forever, as in you don't age. So you never die of natural causes. unless You'd, you could, You'd have to like die from a car crash or some shit. I would say yes. I don't know if I'd want that. I don't think I would either. Because... The world we live in right now, it's pretty great. The technology is pretty cool. But I don't think I want to live in the world that's going to be Here. in 80 years. At the, like when we're dying, when we're at the end of our lives, I don't think I would want to live in that world. Imagine how good the video games will be in 80 years. They will never touch Ratchet and Clank. Well, there's going to be more Ratchet and Clanks. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think phones are making us stupid. I think phones are making us stupid. It makes us so dependent on this little fucking thing that we put in our pocket. Yeah. Like, you can't ask someone a simple question without them going to Google. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a good tool to have. It is, a, it is the best tool to have. Right, so it's nice to have. So you can be in that situation where someone asks you a question. You're like, oh, I'm curious. Like, I wonder... 
how how many whales are on Earth? You could look it up, and you could get a pretty good estimate as to how many whales are on Earth. Like, oh, cool, I didn't know that. Now I have that knowledge stored in my brain somewhere. But I think from a social aspect, phones do not help. It makes us antisocial because we can time. Just, we can socialize through our phone by sitting in our room our entire day. I could talk to a thousand people at once in my bed. I feel like an introvert wasn't a thing a hundred years ago. I don't know about that. I'm an introvert, honestly. Like I love alone time. But I, I, I then I'll say the it. amount of introverts there are today compared sure. compared to 100 years ago, not even close. Because it's just so easy to not go anywhere. You don't have to. Would you rather? And maybe that's not a product of having a phone, but also just because how convenient everything has become in America. If you had a time machine. Would you rather go 50 years back or 50 years forward to show the people the phone that you currently have? Like if you went a time machine just to go show like people 50 years ago or 50 people 50 years in the past or the future, future just show them my phone, the phone that you have, like the people in the future would look at be like, what the fuck is that? No, they'd say, oh, I know what that is. I remember those. We had those like 50 years ago. That's ancient. And then we have phones go- in our hands now. You have a phone. Does it have a battery? You have to touch that thing? Wow. <laughs> what is that, like 5G? <laughs> Hop on the 25G, bro. Yeah, the, the Tesla world internet. <laughs> Tesla just comes out with internet that's global. Well, who's going to do that? Elon Musk is doing that. He's launching satellites to make internet available all over the world. Probably got to pay for some subscription, though. I don't know, but he's making that possible. I know that he's working on it. That would be really cool. He's also talking about he wants to get rid of the the satellite clusters that we have. All the trash? Yeah, surrounding Earth. Like 60% of the satellites surrounding Earth aren't used anymore. They're just floating. Yeah, they're just sitting there. Like the 2G satellites? Yeah. Yeah, no one's using those anymore. Honestly, go get a spaceship with a giant like mechanical arm. They can like pick them up. Dude, you would get like... You didn't tell anyone that you were doing that, and then one day you just went and started taking satellites down for the government. You're getting so much money, or you're getting shot down. I mean, you could establish a contract with the world, with the world, and say, "All right, we'll clean up your satellites. You got to pay us a lot of money, though." <laughs> I want sixty billion dollars. <throat> but I feel like, mm, if you had, if your government had enough money and had the willpower and the want to, to clean up the atmosphere of satellites, I feel like they would have already done it. Is our technology there? To decommission satellites and bring them back to Earth? Yeah. Because they're on the outside of the atmosphere. I would say it's there. I mean, we're, I mean if, if we're not there, then we'll be there in the next five to ten years to be able to launch something into space so we can... But there's also like 6,000 of them. 6,000 satellites? Yeah, there's an absurd number of satellites. Well, 6,000 isn't that much in terms of the size of the Earth. I feel like it's more than that. Way more than (sighs) 6,000. What was that for? I don't want you sighing into the mic. The first, how many satellites does Earth have? And then it says, like, this many satellites, this many satellites for this and for that and stuff. There's a total of 6,542 satellites. 1,800 of them are for communication. 900 of them are for Earth observation. 350 are for technology development and demonstration. And 150 are for navigation and positioning. And those are are the ones being used. Yeah. Yeah. What about the ones that aren't being used? Uh, about 4,000. So there's 10,000 satellites in space. 6,000 satellites. Wait. There are 6,542 satellites. The Total. One, the ones that I named off are the ones that we actually use. So okay. somewhere around... 4,000. Like, yeah. Aren't being used. Interesting. Oh, it actually says right here, 3,372 satellites are active, leaving 3,170 inactive. There were 3,000 satellites surrounding Earth that we just, we don't need. How many spare parts that is? A lot. Imagine the, the amount of resources that you could 
recapture from those satellites and reuse. Make more satellites. Make more satellites that are useful. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a big conspiracy theory. Okay. They say the world could have gone wireless before wired if we had listened to one person. Tesla. Do you believe that? I Maybe, have, but no. I haven't looked into it. I don't. I know the technology back then was <sighs> awful, but compared to today. Well, so wireless. What Tesla was talking about was wireless electricity. Mm -hmm. So electricity in the house wouldn't be hardwired. It wouldn't be going to an outlet. It would have been wireless. What that would look like, I don't know. Bluetooth. <laughs> Bluetooth electricity. I mean. That, that seems kind of dangerous. Because, like, if the electricity just, like, flows through the air. I mean, you need 120 volts in all the sockets in your house. And not everything uses 120 volts. That's why you can, you plug in things like your phone charger. It's got the little white brick, the transformer on it that turns it into about 7 volts so that your phone can use it. If there's 120 volts wirelessly flying around your house, you'll get shocked all the time. Yeah. And like I said, I don't know what it would look like. I mean, you might have to... Yeah, don't even have the first idea what wireless home, yeah, electricity would look like. Because, I mean, you stick your, your finger in an outlet, you'll get shocked. You're like, oh, wow, that didn't feel very good. <laughs> yeah, I've done that before. Oh, I've done that too. It doesn't feel good. Low voltage, getting shocked by low voltage, it, it doesn't hurt. Like, getting electrocuted or shocked, it doesn't hurt. It's just really startling. It catches you so off guard, but, like... When it's low voltage, it's like a really hard vibration. Like you, if you touch your you finger. You mean like 120? Is that low? I know 10,000 is high. <laughs> yeah, you're dead at 200. No. If you took one amp of 240, yeah, I think you're dead. So what high, What are high voltage smokes? Well, high voltage smokes, those are those are 120. Okay. Yeah. So so I've been shocked by 120 before. Yeah. It just it feels like uh, it's it's like a buzz. It's like a, a real strong buzz. Yeah. When it's 120, that'll get through your whole body. But when it's lower than that, like an outlet with transformer or something, when it's smaller than 120, it's like a really like hard vibration on your finger if you touch your finger into it. But yeah. I've been shocked by high voltage one time. Holy shit. I think. I might be speaking out of term, but I think about 240. If you took 240, it might kill you. Um, Dad's friend, um, the one that owned um, off McNeil, the car place. Yeah. Custom Car Crafters. Is that it? Yes. The, yeah, the guy that owned that, he was working in his shop one day, and he was working on, like, not on a car, but, like, on something, like, at the girders of the ceiling. He got electrocuted while he's standing on like a 10, 12 foot ladder and he's sitting there getting electrocuted. He can't move and he found the strength in him to take his foot out and kick the ladder out from under him and he fell 10 feet, broke a few ribs, was in ICU for like a month. Wow. But he came out of that. Richard. I Richard. Richard? Yeah. yeah. Dick. Um. I think, yeah, so 220, 240 can kill you. It depends on how, how, how many amps it is, just how, how fast it's moving, how, how fast it's pushing. So you know the relationship between voltage, amperage, and resistance? Yeah. Resistance is what lowers it. And like Resistance is like, I've always thought of it as like a hose. Like so, a garden hose? Like a garden hose. So how much water there is, how, how girthy that water is, is your voltage. And then how fast it's coming out. So it, it can like trickle out, you know, it can drip or it can go like a fire hydrant. That's amps. That's amperage. And then if you put like a zip tie around the, the hose, that would be your resistance. So if you take one amp of a 220 volts, 240 volts, it can probably kill you. So what if you took two amps of 180? That would, that would definitely kill you. Two amps of 120. Uh, I don't know. That's, that's just half and double of one amp of 240. Or double and then half. Oh, let's see. Let's 
see. Yeah, two amps. Two amps in a lot of cases would kill you. Um, Are you looking at a chart or something? No, I'm reading a forum, just like electrical engineers talking about this. Um, But it looks like... What the heck? I don't want to... No. Okay, you know what? Screw it. But yeah, two amps is a lot to take, especially if it's... I mean, 120 volts at two amps, yeah, it would probably kill you. How fast is one amp? Like, how many miles per hour? (laughs) I don't think that's how it works. Yeah, I know. You know, my favorite thing is to say shit like that. Yeah. to say the dumbest thing that I can think of. And then my favorite part is how many people think I'm being serious. That is easily my favorite part. There are so many people I know that probably think I'm stupid, that probably think I'm on some kind of spectrum. Yeah. Just because I like to say dumb shit. I use my smart energy to f- to figure out the dumbest thing I can say. Really? Try me. This one says, assuming a steady current flow as opposed to a shock from a capacitor or form of static electricity, shocks above 2,700 volts are often fatal when those above 11,000 volts being usually fatal, though exceptional cases have been noted. That's when you get into milliamps. That'd be like 10 milliamps. You could probably survive that much voltage. I've, I saw a video of like a guy that was working on power lines and they wear these thick ass wool gloves to like insulate them from the electricity. But while they're standing there on that, what are those things called where it's like a bunch of like X's and you can raise the platform? Scissor lift. Scissor lift. Yeah. He was sitting on the scissor lift and he was taking his hand and he was just like, like if the wire was right here, instead of cupping it, he was just like right around it, just like hovering his hand around the wire. And you can literally like see the electricity going off of it onto his, onto his glove. Yeah. It's, and you can hear it. It's like, yeah, it's gnarly. Yeah. So basically it doesn't matter how much the voltage is. If, If the voltage is, 10 milliamps or less, it probably can't kill you. Is 10 milliamps 10,000? No, it's 0.01 of an amp. Oh. Wait, you said 10 milliamps or 10 millivolts? Milliamp. Oh. So 0.01 amps. Okay. Doesn't The so voltage doesn't really matter. It, it won't. It probably won't kill you. So you, no matter what the voltage, if it's 0.1 amps. Or lower. I mean, it would have to be an astronomical number. Yeah. To kill you. But then... Most circuits, so let's say in that case it's a 10,000 volt circuit. If it's 100 milliamps or 200 milliamps or higher, it would kill you. Wow. So it's 0.1 amp. You can survive 0.1. You can survive 0.01. I thought you said up so to 10 milliamps. Which 10, is- 10, 10 milliamps is 0.01. 100 milliamps is 0.1. Oh, okay. See what I I'm was, saying? Okay, I thought, okay, that makes a lot more sense. I was thinking 10 milliamps is 0.1. So you could take. I got to go back and get my decimal stuff. 3,000 volts at 10 milliamps, it'd probably be okay. So now that makes me wonder. But I'm not saying to go out and do that now. I'm not saying you should go test it. Um, it's not what I'm saying. I do not condone trying to see if you'll die. Now I'm wondering when I got electrocuted, not electrocuted, but shocked in that lady's house. I wonder what the voltage and amps were. Because they were electrician smokes where like the it's going to be one amp. The wires that went in the back were like fat and they were just like twisted together. Yeah, it's probably 16 gauge or 18 gauge wire. Yeah, and I did take the, the wire caps. Yeah, the wire nuts. Yeah. So I wonder what that was. I mean, it's going to be one amp. Wow. I'm lucky. It's one amp at 120 volts. That's not going to kill you. Oh. That's like, that's the bee sting. That's the, the like, oh, the really shocking, like surprising, like, oh, don't touch that. Yeah. Whenever that first happened to me, I, I like right after I let go, I was like, oh, 
like it just caught me so off guard. I just I had like this sigh after, and the lady heard me across the house, and she was like, "Are you okay?" And I was like, "I'm fine, like totally fine, nothing to worry about." Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm just like, "Holy fuck!" Right. It's so it's startling. It doesn't hurt. Nothing. It just scares the fuck out of you. Guess how many volts a police taser is? Take a guess. 2,000. 50,000. 50,000 volts. Definitely in the milliamps. Clearly they're not killing people by pushing. I mean, that taser wouldn't be capable of that size of pushing a whole amp at 50,000 volts. But... I was just... Whenever I was thinking of my guess, whenever they press the button for the taser, you can see the electricity come out and everything. I was oh, like, yeah. you got to aim high for this one, but two yeah. grand was off by a lot. Two grand was off by 25 times. Wow. At least 500 people in the U.S. have died since 2001 after being shocked with a taser. Wow. During an arrest or while in jail. So they can kill you, but I think... Those would be extreme bit. cases where they get held into it. The largest number of deaths are in California, 92, Florida at 65, Texas is next, 37. <laughs> wow, that's so fucking not surprising. <laughs> yeah, why are you laughing at those dead people? I'm not laughing, I'm just laughing that, of course, Texas was next. California, Florida, and Texas, those are the three states that just define the U.S. You know, I and then New York. I would say, I wish they would show you how many amps these tasers are. Maybe I'm just not looking in the right place. Because I'll see like some dumb questions, like, "Can five amps kill you?" Well, it depends how much voltage there is. Can 120 volts kill you? Well, it depends how many amps there are. I'm gonna look this up real quick. A volts versus amps chart. It says. The electrical output of the taser is 50,000 volts, and then the output is an average of 3.6 milliamps. Yeah. 3.6 milliamps, which is... 0. 0.0036. Three, yes, yeah. Of an amp. What about a stun gun? A stun cane? Gun. A stun gun. Oh, I wonder what a cattle prod is. A cattle prod? Well, you can, there's dials, there's adjusters on those things where you can change how hard you want it to shock. An effective stun gun will have at least three milliamps. Really? Yeah. Average stun guns on the market usually have between 4.5 to 4.9 milliamps. Oh my god. The sh the maximum voltage from a stun gun is 30,000 volts. Well, a taser's 50,000. Yeah. I want to see a chart where it's like voltage to amperage and then what would actually kill you if you took it. So like one one amp at 220, okay, let's just say that would kill you. Are you looking for like a line chart? I was no, I just want to see like I don't know what, even what chart. I mean, maybe I'll just make the chart on my own. I'll just do the research and I'll, I'll make this happen. And I'll say, yep, these are the, the voltages and amperages that would actually kill you. And it'd be this, this curve. What happens when you get fact checked? When I get fact checked? Yeah. Well, I mean, you can deduce if, okay, now I'm just looking at wire gauges. It's like, I, I don't need to know about wire gauges. But anyways, okay, we've been on this topic for a little while. Um, I didn't know a lot of it. Well, like especially about stun guns and tasers. Well, yeah, so they've got a bunch of voltage. It's really shocking, but it's not a bunch of amps. So in that case, it was 3.7 milliamps. Would you rather get... 3.6 milliamps at 50,000 volts. Would you rather get tased for three seconds or get stun gun for eight seconds? <laughs> Say that again. Tased for three seconds, stun gunned for eight. I'd rather get tased, get it over with. 
Yeah, you get that stun gun for eight seconds. That's a long ass eight seconds. I feel like that's overkill. If you're tasing someone with a stun gun, eight seconds just feels kind of long. Yeah, usually like when you see like a, I've seen like on live PD when they use the taser, they do it for about three, five seconds. Yeah, max. You just want them to fall on the ground, basically. Yeah. And then there's also that thing like they can shoot it, it attaches to you, they can tase it, and they can rip that off, and there's another one ready. Yeah. That's. Dude, that's crazy. That's awesome technology, man. That is technology. At its finest. It's a fucking... Do you think that thing has a big old battery in it? Three mags. Or three three ammo mag. Let's see. Do they, they, have, they have to have batteries. Let's see. Okay. Now, that was actually a dumb question. They definitely have batteries. Um, I don't know why I said that. Yeah, they have batteries. No, they have, they're hooked up to an extension cord. From the car. Taser replacement battery pack for the Taser Pulse. And it is... 80 bucks. Is that your guess? That is my guess. How many batteries? One. 80 bucks. Wrong. 40. You can get a pack of two of them for 70. Oh, nice. If you want to get the Taser Pulse self-defense tool, how much do you think the stun gun is? 250. 400. Damn, that's actually not bad. For a stun gun? That's not bad. Like, instead of going out and buying a Smiths and Weston, just get a stun gun. And then you can beat the shit out of whoever breaks into your house on top of electrocuting them. Taze them and then beat them with a baseball bat? Bam. Bust his kneecaps. Break the kneecaps. Or you just have a gun, just pop, pop. Hey, Lenny. Get the bat. Hey, Donnie. Hey, Donnie. Tony. Hey, Tony. Hey, Tony. Get the bat. Yeah. You want to call someone? Yeah, I'll call Brett real quick. We're, we're about to go back out, go dev hunting again. Really? Yeah, we're going, I'm going to leave here in just a second. We're going dev hunting again. All right, I'm going to ask him the taser stun gun. Would you rather? Taser versus stun gun? Tase for three, stun for eight. Let me give him a quick call. Are you ever so smelly that you can smell yourself while you're just sitting there? Oh, yeah. I have that right now. It's because I skated for like an hour before this. I didn't I didn't need to know that. Well, guess what? The viewers did. Did they want to know that? They did. Because all of them are pruning their face right now. I found that to be highly unlikely. Come on. It should be dialing. There it goes. He's on his way to the ranch right now. Sweet. Hey, hey Brett. What's up? What are you doing? You're live. Oh, just got out from lease. I'm ready to hunt. Nice. <laughs> I got a question for you. All right. Would you rather get tased by a, a taser for three seconds or get stunned by a stun gun for eight seconds? Uh, taser for three. Yeah, I'm on the same I boat. Like, I feel like they're going to hurt the same amount, but a stun gun actually, like, shoots prongs into you. Yeah, it, like, it attaches to you, so it's got, like, these barbs on them. Oh, that's right. So you get stabbed, and you get tased. <laughs> Fuck that. Yeah, so I'm going to go I'm gonna go with the taser. Okay. All right, thank you for your opinion. All right, uh, I'll head there in a second. All right. All right, bye. Dang it, he just got to the lease. I need to go. Well, it's been a good one. It's been fantastic. So glad that we've made this happen. That was probably my favorite ending we've ever had. It just went silent. Well, it's a good one. <laughs>